Premium quality football shirts at an extremely affordable price. Sound good? If so, check out the sponsor of today's video, jerseyfifa.com. You can see that I've sent these some shirts and they really are top quality. So make sure to click the link in the description to go find a shirt for yourself or perhaps as a gift for someone else. And you can now use code jerseyfifa at checkout for 10% off your order. That's code jerseyfifa at checkout for 10% off your order. I really do recommend their products, so go take a look. Now let's get into the analysis. We are now at that time of the year when a transfer window is open and everyone is being linked with every move to every different club. Manchester United are signing about 30 different midfielders and Morata is probably going to move for £150 million somewhere. It happens every year, all this speculation, every club is always linked with so many players. And if we're being honest, they don't need half of them. A lot of it is a load of rubbish. So what I'm going to do today is kind of cut that rubbish out. I'm going to go through every single team in the Premier League. I've got them all written down here, including the newly promoted teams. And I'm going to tell you one player that they should sign this summer. So we will start with Manchester City because they finished the season at the top of the league last year. And I think if we look at that team, it's very hard to improve it because it's pretty much perfect. There was a flaw up front of signed Haaland to address that. So I don't think we can improve the first team. However, I do think there's a bit of an issue in the squad depth in the midfield and I think with Fernandinho leaving the club there is a bit of a gap there and to fill that I would go for Calvin Phillips of Leeds. Being English Calvin Phillips would obviously cost a lot of money there is always that English tax on players however I do think it would be worth it. Calvin Phillips is a very tactically astute player having worked with Bielsa he's an excellent passer he can play in the six as he has done for Leeds or the eight as he has done for England I think he's got the intensity that is needed and I do think he has become a little bit underrated as a player. So I think he could go into that Manchester City team, play as the backup, maybe take a season to get used to it a bit like Grealish has. But then maybe the year after that, I think he could be a top player for that Manchester City side. And to me, he does look like a typical Pep Guardiola holding midfield. So I think it would be quite a nice move. Next up is Liverpool. They, of course, finished second in the league last season, pushing City all away. And again, their first team is so good, it's hard to improve it. They've signed Darwin Nunes last night. But I see a gap in a team that's in right central midfield where Jordan Henderson is good, but he's perhaps not quite of the level you need. He's perhaps not quite creative enough. And the player that I would bring in for that position is Lucas Paqueta. For me, Lucas Paqueta is one of my favourite players in all of Europe and probably all the world. He's so good. Yeah, he's so good. Um, he's brilliantly versatile. He's brilliantly skillful. He works hard. He creates. He's a goal scorer. He has everything you want. He can play as a backup striker. He can play as a right winger or as a creative midfielder. And I think if we picture that Darwin Nunes up front is probably going to drift over to the left-hand side, then Lucas Paqueta could be the perfect player to play that right central midfield role and really take advantage of the space that Nunes is going to leave. Off the ball, he, he's brilliant, he presses extremely high up the pitch. He really does strike me as a Jurgen Klopp player. He's applied his trade in the French League, and I think it's time for his move to the big club. And for me, Liverpool looks perfect. Next up is Chelsea, and Chelsea, I think the position that needs upgrading is obvious because they're losing several centre-backs this summer, some for free, which is horrible business, by the way. But anyway, they're going to need a new centre-back, and the man they're always linked with, and rightly so, is Jules Kunde. Now Jules Kunde is a little bit injury prone, which is an issue with a transfer, but we've seen it done in the past and players randomly just lose these injuries and they become fine. So I think it's a transfer that would work. Kunde in a back three could be an absolute dream. He is brilliant on the ball and Chelsea are losing a real sense of ball progression with Rudiger leaving the club, but Kunde would replace that. Kunde is arguably even better on the ball. His dribbling is brilliant. He carries a threat at set pieces despite his small height. And I do think that playing in the back three, being allowed to take the ball out of defence and progress the ball forward could be a really good move for him. So in fourth, we've got Spurs and they've pulled off some brilliant business already. They've got Perisic in and it also looks like Basuma is going to get over the line as well. Two brilliant bits of business, but there is still a weakness in the team. And for me, that is in the defence. And in Conte's back three, those outside centre-backs are absolutely crucial. On the right, Romero is brilliant, but I think we need an upgrade for Ben Davies on the left. And for me, I would go for Gavardio of Leipzig. Gavardio, I've done a video on him recently. I mentioned him linking him to Manchester United a few, couple of months ago. Gavardio is a brilliant, brilliant young centre-back and he's unlike anything really in Europe at the moment. His ability on the ball is absolutely incredible and that's why it's crucial that he plays in a back three. Playing on the left-hand side of Conte's midfield would really allow him to carry the ball forward into the midfield. He's a brilliant dribbler, but he really is creative. There's, there's defenders out there that progress the ball well. We were talking about Kunde a second ago. Gavardio takes it to the next level. He is genuinely creative with the way that he plays. He's super aggressive in a tackle, wants to defend on the front foot, and he's also good at the back as well. I do think Gavardio to Spurs, it feels like a perfect transfer. 
And I think with those other signings, if they could then do this, bring in a top centre-back, then I think Spurs really could challenge right at the top under Conte next season. So next up is Arsenal. I think the thing that they were missing next season is quite obvious, right? Lacazette didn't score enough goals. I've said numerous times that I, didn't, I think he had a very good season. I think he played a really important role in the Arsenal team, but he didn't score enough goals. Arsenal need a player that can come in, do the link-up play and also score. And for me, there's only one man for that job and it's Gianluca Scamacca. Scamacca is a player I wasn't too aware of long ago. Only words. Skamaka is a player I wasn't too aware of at the start of the season, but I kind of heard about his name halfway through the year and thought I'd do some research. I've watched a lot of his games and looked at the underlying stats, his injury record, things like that. And he's a top, top player. He's one of my favourite players to watch at the moment. He's really fun. At six foot five, you might expect a bit of a clunky style player. It's not the case. He's brilliant with his feet. And I, I understand the comparisons to Zlatan Ibrahimovic. He's obviously not as good. Let's not, let's not be silly. But he's very similar in the way that he plays. And there aren't very many six foot five footballers that are so good with the ball at their feet. His technical ability is brilliant. He's a good passer. He's a good long passer. So he could do that Arteta job of dropping deep and linking the play like we know Arteta wants. It's crucial to the way that they play. I think Skamaka could do that. But importantly, he scores a lot of goals. He's overperformed his expected goals this season. And some of his finishes have been really fantastic. He can score from range. He can score from in the box. And I think what's so great about him is he doesn't need any space. Half a yard, the ball is in the back of the net. I've got another video looking at him in more detail soon, so make sure to keep an eye out on that for the channel. But Skamaka is the one for Arsenal for me. So next up, we're moving on to Manchester United. And as I said, they've been linked with a ridiculous amount of players this summer. But one player that they've really heavily been linked with is Frankie de Jong. And again, I think rightly so. I think Frankie de Jong could be the perfect first signing for Eric Ten Hag at Manchester United. If you said this six months ago, I would have laughed at you because I think we all kind of thought that Frankie Dion was going to go to Barcelona and that's where it'd stay. But it hasn't quite worked out and they're a financial mess. So there is that room for Manchester United to bring him in. And I think Eric Ten Hag could be the first manager since his time at Ajax to use Frankie in the right way. Allowing him to drop deep, get the ball off the defence and then really progress the ball forward. Frankie is a brilliant player and despite not hitting the heights at Barcelona, for me he's one of the best midfielders in the world. He's certainly one of my favourites and I think he could be the perfect player for Eric Ten Hag to use to really instill his philosophy at Manchester United. But I've done plenty of videos on that, so I don't want to talk about it too much. Frankie De Jong to Manchester United is a signing that needs to happen. Next up is West Ham, and I couldn't really think of too many players, but then someone came to my mind, and it just made sense, Jesse Lingard. Lingard has obviously fallen out of favour at Manchester United. He's leaving on a free, and one place where he's had a lot of love and a lot of joy and a lot of success is West Ham. It just seems to make sense. West Ham are brilliant on the transition and that really suits Jesse Lingard as a player. We saw it the other season when he spent the second half of the season on loan at West Ham and it really reignited his form and it got the best out of him as a player. And I think West Ham could, could do with an upgrade in that middle role just behind Antonio. And Lingard, it looks perfect for such as like for free, he's just paying his wages. He gets on with a squad already, he knows David Moyes. I think he could slot into that team quite nicely and really hit the ground running at the start of the next season. Jesse Lingard to West Ham, We've seen it already, so there's almost not too much to talk about, but it's certainly a move that I think should happen. Get it done, David Moyes. So next up, we're moving to Leicester City, and they're in, they're in a bit of a weird position at the moment, aren't they? For large periods of last season, they were really, really awful to watch, but they finished the season quite strongly, and in the end, they've had a decent ending position in the league table. So the question is now, where do they upgrade? And I think for me, the defence is an issue. They weren't helped this season by injuries to Wesley Fofana in particular, but I still think they need some backup and perhaps they need a young defender that they can nurture and someone that Johnny Evans can really help and teach and mentor and bring through the team. And for me, I would go for Lukeba from Lyon. Lukeba is a brilliant ball playing young centre back. He's athletic, tall, good in the air and a threat at set pieces. But as I said, what he really loves doing is playing with the ball at his feet. Personally, I'm always, I love left foot centre backs. I, I don't know why, it's just something that I really enjoy. He ticks that box and I think him along for Fofana in three or four years' time, that could be a really nice centre-back partnership. Like I said, Johnny Evans or Soyuncu could perhaps be the main centre-back this season and really bing Nukeba through. He's still a teenager, plenty of room for growth. He plays for the French under-21 team and he is a top, top player. I really like the look of him. So certainly keep an eye on him, even if he doesn't go to Leicester. I think he's a player you need to watch this summer. So next up is Brighton. I think we all know the problems. They played brilliant football. They finished ninth in the league last season, which is very impressive with that squad. Graham Potter's a really good manager. He's one of my favourites. He's such a good coach. 
Just the setup, the patterns, the tactics, they're really nice to watch. They get the ball into the final third, and then there is just no quality. So Brighton desperately need a player to come in up front, lead the line, and get the goals. Because if that happens, there's no reason they can't take that step to the next level to maybe even challenge for a European spot. Because I really do love the setup. So the player that I've gone for up front, I looked around, I couldn't really find too many. But Brereton of Blackburn was the one that came to my mind. Brereton is a proven goal scorer. He's done it at a championship. And people will say there's a big step up from the championship to the Premier League. Look at Mitrovic, for example. And they're not wrong. That is the case. But it is the sort of thing that Brighton do. They look at these players from the lower leagues, the championship, maybe abroad. And they look for the goal scorers. And I think Brereton could be a player that comes into the team, leads that line. And like I said, if Brighton can get a goal scorer who's going to get 15 goals a season in the Premier League, then suddenly they are a much bigger threat. And I do think they could make a push for maybe a Conference League place. Graham Potter is a top manager. Whatever business they do this summer, I'm sure they get it right because they always do. So next up, we're going down to 10th place Wolves. And again, I think the problem is quite obvious. They just don't score enough goals. Defensively, they're quite decent. They're very solid. They're awkward to play against but they just don't score. They haven't been helped by the fact that Pedro Neto was out for most of the season, but they need a striker. I'm, I love Raul Jimenez. He's a brilliant player, but since that head injury, he just isn't the same. He looks like he's lost a yard of pace, of reaction speed, and they just need someone that can come in and lead the line. And I think Ivan Tony could be the perfect option. Tony has had a good season at Brentford, but I don't think it's playing for a slightly smaller team hasn't really allowed him to showcase his talent. He's brilliant with his link-up play, and that is something that really goes under the radar. I think of Wolves, particularly in the big games against those top teams where they sit deep, I could see them using Tony as the long ball, as the out ball on the counter-attack, go along to Tony and linking up with Neto. And Neto and Tony could have a similar relationship to the one that Tony has had with Mbwemo this season, because they have been really good when they've got that working. So I think Tony to Wolves would be quite a nice move. It's unfortunate for him, and it's really sad what happened to him. I think I'd still keep him in the squad as a backup option. But for me, I would bring Tony in to lead the line. So next up, we're going on to Newcastle. And I think this is one of the most exciting teams to look at this season. I'll probably do a video in the summer at some point, looking at all the players that they could bring in and who I personally would bring in because they've got so much money to spend. But just because they've got a lot of money to spend, I think it's still important that they do their business smartly. And rather than going out and spending 60 million on a player, I would be looking down to the relegated clubs. And Ismail Assar of Watford looks like a brilliant option. On the left wing, Newcastle have a lot of quality in the same maximum, but on the right in Ryan Fraser, there's not that same bit of quality. Fraser's a good player in his own right, he'll work hard and things like that, but he's just not great. His male Sar would bring a different quality. The ball carrying ability, the dribbling, and he started the season absolutely on fire. He was scoring goals for fun. Now that did dry up as the season went on, but he was playing for Watford. No offence to Watford, they were bad all year. So... Any numbers in that Watford team is quite impressive, and Saar did produce goals and assists, and I think he's ready for that move. A year ago, he was being linked with the likes of Liverpool, because he's a really promising young player. So I think Newcastle, it could be a very good move for Saar, it keeps him in the Premier League, and for Newcastle, they're getting a brilliant right winger at a more affordable price. So we're moving on to Crystal Palace, and again, Crystal Palace are a bit of an awkward one. I feel like I've said that quite a lot. Maybe maybe transfers are harder than they look, you know, maybe the clubs, I, I now understand why they struggle, it's quite difficult. But one player that was crucial for Crystal Palace last season was Conor Gallagher. His energy, his creativity, his athleticism was all absolutely crucial. And he is going to go back to Chelsea. Will they get him back again? I doubt it. I don't think so. I think Gallagher will probably want to go elsewhere. So Crystal Palace needs to try and replace that energy. And as always, they tend to recruit from the championship. So I'm going to do the same. And I'm going to say Brennan Johnson. Now... It's a bit of a cheat one because Brendan Johnson has just been promoted, but Brendan Johnson is a brilliant young player. He's largely played on the right wing for Nottingham Forest this season, but he can also play as an attacking midfielder or a central midfielder. And what he has is bags of energy and ball carrying ability. Very similar to Gallagher. I think he could come into this team, play in the right central midfield role, and I think he would offer a huge threat, particularly in those big games on the counter-attack. Against the smaller teams, he has that little bit of creativity. He chips in with more than his fair share of assists and goals. I think it would look like a really nice signing. Like I said, Palace signed a lot of players from the Championship. And personally, I'd quite like to see Brennan Johnson being the next one. He looks like a top young player. So next up, we've got Brentford, who massively overachieved with a 13th place finish. And I think they can be massively thankful for Christian Eriksen for that. He would be the dream signing, but I don't think they're going to get him back. So what they desperately need to do is try and find some creativity from somewhere. The transfer market is the place to do it. Now, the way Brentford do things is they use that money ball method that we all know and love. They find these players that not everyone really knows about. They find the players with the high expected goals or expected assists 
things like that, the underlying stats. And the player that I really like the look of is Benjamin Borogu of Rennes. Benjamin Borogu finished the season as, with the highest expected assists in Europe's top five leagues. He can play in the centre of the midfield, on the left wing or on the right wing, and that could suit Thomas Frank perfectly, especially if he sticks with that 4-3-3 that we saw towards the end of the season. Borogu is by no means the level of Christian Eriksen, but I think that was a bit of an anomaly having Eriksen at the club. You're probably not going to get another player of that level, but Borogu is an experienced player, he's very versatile, could play in a few different positions, and it would offer Brentford an outball other than Tony and Mbwemo. Mbwemo needs support, they have good uh, creativity on one wing, they need it on the other, and maybe midfield as well. Borogu can do that job in either position, and with the highest expected assists in Europe, I think it'd be quite a nice signing and very affordable for less than 10 mil probably. So next up, we've got Southampton. And again, I think they're another club that are absolutely desperate for a forward, a striker, whatever you want to call it, because Broger is going to be leaving the club back to Chelsea. And again, I think it's unlikely that they get him back. So they need to replace him with a player that can play as the striker, as the main man, but also peel out wide. And as always, Southampton tend to be quite smart with their business. So the player I would like to suggest is Junior Adamu. So Junior Adamu is 21 years old. He was born in Nigeria and currently plays for the Austrian first team. However, he also plays his club football for Salzburg. And as we all know, let me just check that. Yeah, it is Salzburg. As we all know, Salzburg are brilliant at developing these young forwards in particular. So I think Adamu is a player that could come into Southampton. He's that smart bit of business where you're not signing the big mainstream name. You're signing a player for about £15 million, developing as a player, and then maybe two or three years, you can make a £20 million profit on him. Adamu is a really exciting young player. He's got bags of pace, energy, skills, goals. He's got the lot. And again, I think he could do that role that Hassan Hurl asks of his striker of drifting slightly wider. So Adamu is not a player a lot of people will know about, but perhaps that's exactly the reason Southampton should sign him. Again, he's that sort of player that can come in, develop and then get a profit. He kind of fits that Southampton model perfectly. And I do think he would do an excellent job leading the line for Southampton. So next up is Everton and last season they avoided relegation by the skin of their teeth. But let's be honest, they were awful all season long. It's their worst season in a long, long time and they desperately need a rebuild. There's a lot of positions that I could list that need upgrading, but we're going to go for midfield. Gomez isn't good enough. Alan has struggled. Van der Beek's going back to Manchester United. Dele Alli hasn't really made an impact at all. And Iwobi's been one of the best midfielders. And no offence to Iwobi, but it's a bit of a problem when Iwobi is one of your starting midfielders. So they desperately need an upgrade, a young upcoming player. And for this position, I would like Frank Lampard to use his Chelsea link and see if he can get Conor Gallagher into the club. As I was saying, Conor Gallagher had a brilliant season last year for Crystal Palace. He brought bags of athleticism, energy, the high pressing, the assists, creativity, goal output, a little bit of everything. And perhaps Lampard could use him in a similar way to the way that he used Mason Mount at Derby and Chelsea. Gallagher could come into that team and really be at the heart of a rebuild at Everton because they desperately need one. This is one signing they should make. I think there's a lot they need. So let me know who else they should get into the club. The so next up is Leeds. And again, they're a team that only just avoided relegation last season after a massive drop off from the year before. And again, I think they're going to lose some key players as a result of that. I've already spoken about how Calvin Phillips could leave, but I think the bigger loss might be Rafinha on the right wing. His goals, his skill, a bit of everything, that would be a massive loss. So they desperately need to replace that. And again, I'm going to go to a relegated team. And we're going to go for Watford and Emmanuel Dennis. Emmanuel Dennis, despite his diminutive nature, is a very strong player. And again, playing for a Watford team that is getting relegated, I think he could come in at quite a cheap price and do a really good job on that right wing. He's got bags of pace and energy. And again, considering he was playing for a very, very poor Watford team, he got a good amount of goals and assists. I think he probably featured in everyone's FPL team at one point during the season, and he really did have some bright spells. So perhaps playing in a Leeds team under Jesse Marsh, where they're hoping to now move forward and establish themselves as a Premier League club, it could be a good bit. A, it could be a good bit of business to bring him into the club. I do think he would be quite affordable coming from that relegated team, and I would really like to see it happening because. I think without doubt he is a Premier League level player, so he deserves the opportunity to show him and prove himself once again. So now moving to the newly promoted teams and the team that blew the championship away last season was Fulham. However, despite all their success, when you come to the Premier League, it is a big step up and I think they need an upgrade in midfield. And for that, I would actually stay in the championship and go for Sander Burge. Sander Burge is a real favourite player of mine. I've liked him for a few years, but he's been horribly hit by injuries. Now. That's an issue, obviously, for Fulham fans. They don't want an injury-hit player. But if he can avoid injury, 
He is a brilliant young midfielder. He's got loads of drive. He can play as the holding midfielder. He can play as the eight. More of an advanced eight. He's got a few different positions he can play. And I think he's Premier League ready. The question is, can he avoid that injury? It's a gamble. Personally, it's a gamble I would like to see happen because I really do think he is a good player. He is certainly Premier League quality. And in my opinion, he is certainly an upgrade on what Fulham currently have in the midfield. And that is essential. Next up on the list is Bournemouth. They came second in the championship last season, securing that automatic promotion position. Again, it was thoroughly deserved, but again, I'm seeing areas in that squad that need upgrade. And no offence to Adam Smith, I'm not sure he's a Premier League fullback. In the modern day, fullbacks are one of the most important positions, especially at the highest level. And I just think Bournemouth don't really have the quality they need. The problem is, look around the Premier League, look around other leagues, where is the quality? Someone I quite like the look of is Manchester United player Brandon Williams. He spent last season on loan at Norwich, and whilst Norwich did struggle, I thought that Williams was often one of their better players. I think he could be brought into Bournemouth, maybe on loan again, or at a really cut fee. I think Williams is probably going to look for a move because he wants to play regular football, and again, I do think he's Premier League quality. He's not Manchester United level, but for a newly promoted team, he'll bring plenty of grit, determination, he can put a ball into the box, he's good with the ball at his feet. I think it be, could be quite a nice signing. I'm sure Bournemouth fans perhaps want something a little more optimistic, but they don't have a ton of money to spend, and I think Brandon Williams on loan or as a permanent signing could be quite a nice move. So the last team that was promoted to the Premier League via the playoffs was Nottingham Forest, and their journey throughout the playoffs, first of all, congratulations to them on that, because it was brilliant, the penalty shootout and everything. It really was good, but I'm worried about them in the Premier League. A lot of the base of their squad is either low knees or players that are probably going to get snapped up by someone else. Jed Spencer, right back, on loan from Middlesbrough. He's probably going to go somewhere else. He looks like a top, top player. Brendan Johnson, I've already linked with Crystal Palace. And then James Garner, one of the most important players, was on loan from Manchester United. And I doubt they'll get him back. So again, I think they need to replace that. That's what they need to try and replace. And the player I would like to see, well, I'd like Steve Cooper to use his England under-17 history and try and bring in one of those former players, Morgan Gibbs-White. Morgan Gibbs-White, again, is one of those young English players that is without doubt Premier League quality, but he's never quite had that break that he's needed, never got that sustained football in the first team. And I think he has a lot of similarities to someone like, like James Garner. He's probably a little bit more attacking and creative, so perhaps the balance would need to be shifted slightly. But I do think he's the sort of player that could come in and provide some real quality in that Nottingham Forest midfield, and importantly, some creativity. He can do the defensive work, he'll work off the ball, but importantly, he's going to contribute is going to contribute in the final third. And I think that could be the difference for Nottingham Forest between relegation and safety. They need that sort of creativity and they need some goal output. Morgan Gibbs-White could perhaps provide that. So that is my list of 20 players to join the Premier League or move about in the Premier League. One player for each club. I'm sure I've got some wrong. If I have, let me, let me know what you think. Tell me one player that I got spot on, one player that I got horribly wrong. And actually, someone tell me one player you would like to see your club sign. And also, get in the comments down below and let me know if you'd like to see a similar sort of video, but for one player, each team should sell. Because I think that is equally important this summer. Let me know what you think. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.